Assassin's Creed Odyssey is set in ancient Greece. This is 431 BCE, a time when a lot of crucial decisions were being made in the world's history. I mean, kind of like decisions that were being made in the 1300s, or even now in the 21st century. Really, most eras, if not every era, has been important to the world's history for decision-making, and that's convenient because this video happens to, to be about decision-making, which has really always been important to the world. So today, I will be listing five hard decisions in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Let's get into it. And also, there are spoilers in this video uh, uh, up until about level 15, uh, just in case you're worried about that, so there's the heads up. Starting off with number 5, we have the events of the quest, The Blood Fever. This is recommended at level 2 on the starting island of Kefalonia. This is probably one of the first tough decisions that you have to make in this game, other than, well, if you should play the male or female character, Alexios or Cassandra, and I went Cassandra because the voice actress is absolutely crushing it, and I watched an interview with the real woman and she's really cute, so I'm crushing on her. Okay, so Phoebe wants you to check out a town nearby, Kausos, because apparently it's been hit with a really bad sickness. So it's not far, you head over, and on the outskirts you can already see what looks like this grey stain on the earth, and you can smell the smoke. Something isn't right. So you run into town, and you interrupt a priest with his guards, and they're surrounding a family of four. And apparently the priest wants to kill them. They've been infected with a plague, and he wants to stop the spreading, like they've already done. They've already killed everyone else who lived here, and burned the place so they could contain whatever this thing is. The problem is, the family who's literally kneeling down about to be executed is pleading that they're not sick, that it's only mild, that they can tell, and that they're going to eventually get better. So ultimately, it comes down to you deciding whether you'll let the priest kill them right there, or if you'll stop him and keep them alive. And this really is tough because you really don't know if they're sick or not. I mean, you can't prove it. If they are and they leave and they infect, you know, the next place they go, well, you'll sort of be responsible for causing a lot more death and a lot more sickness, and it could have been stopped right here. So you can let him kill them and stop this thing right in its tracks, and if you do, he'll thank you for being as cautious as you were. But you'll never have known if they were going to get better. So the other option is killing the priest and his guards so that they can then escape. And once the guys are dead, you go and find them and they thank you like mad, like crazy. They say they're, they're going to go seek out healing now from another town. They even try to give you money and you won't accept it because you know they need it. And this might sit better with you because, well, how can you allow one person, like that priest, to play God and decide that, well, just because someone is, is sick, they deserve to die? I mean, they have no idea how close this person is to getting back to normal and, and if they eventually will. So... If you let them live, they go on their way, and you feel like a pretty good person after that. Well, it it's really interesting because, and unfortunately, I wasn't recording when this happened, so I don't have the footage to show, but it was something like eight, eight or nine levels later. Um, I'm, I'm on my ship in the water, and this character comes up to me, and he says, Hey, did you hear about what's happening on Kefalonia? And you say, what? And, and he's like, yeah, apparently there's been this huge outbreak all over the island. A bunch of people are dying. And that's when you sit back and you realize... It all started when you let that family go. Number four, we have the events of the quest, Portion Control. This is recommended at level seven and can be found pretty early after reaching Megaris. And you're running along the road and you stop at a Spartan pacing back and forth. He stands over the bodies of fellow comrades. He's, he's trying to figure out who did this, who killed these men. You investigate, you're not really sure, but you do have reason to believe whoever it is retreated up into the forest. So, you start going up the mountain, and somehow Icaros is able to spot the culprits by looking through the earth. X-ray visions himself into a nearby cave. Uh, okay, so you find it, you go in, and you see a group of people huddling together, pretty suspiciously. They must have been the ones who killed the Spartans, right? But apparently not. They beg you to spare their lives. See, they're claiming that they're just innocent civilians from Megara. Now, the city of Megara right now is controlled by the Athenians, who are currently at war with the Spartans. Well, they say that a mercenary named Irkanos, who you can actually eventually hunt down later in the game, uh, promised these people that he and his friends would kill that group of Spartans on the road. And then once they were done, these civilians could then swoop in and take all the food and water they were carrying, and then use it to feed their families. So these people didn't do any of the killing, they say, they just came by later to loot the dead bodies. 
But we run into some trouble. On one hand, you can kill them. And you might feel compelled to do this because how can you be sure they're telling the truth? I mean, you only have their word to go off of. Not to mention these people, they don't act non-violent. And what I mean is when you say you're going to take the supplies back, they get ready to fight you, quote, over our dead bodies. I mean, you talk them out of it because you're intimidating and you've got a lot of weapons on you. But the point is they're willing to fight you and kill you over these supplies, if it came to it. And even though you're doing this on behalf of the Spartans, you're, you're not necessarily sided with them at this point in the game. So you could just as easily be a civilian just like them. They're willing to kill you? I mean, so if you do kill them, you'll be able to go back to the Spartan on the road, you tell him where the supplies are, and that a group of enemies are now dead. And he's gonna thank you. Job well done. Okay, now the other option is to spare them. It's really tricky because you can have your suspicions, yes, but you could also argue that these people are are currently in a non-combative state, and that, that does not make them soldiers. This is something that a lot of nations actually still struggle with today. It's determining what is a civilian casualty or not. I mean, were they innocent or were they helping the enemy? It's, re- it's, it's a moral debate that is still very relevant today. So they don't attack you on sight, and they're pleading for you to leave them alone. I mean, you can take that as you may. And also, if you actually do end up fighting, most of them attack you barehanded. And I mean, they, they don't have weapons on them, in other words, and they probably couldn't have killed all those Spartans back there with no weapons. So if you do spare them, you let them live, and then when you report back to that one Spartan, which you have to do, well, you end up just telling him that, yeah, you still killed them, because this way he'll be a lot less likely to continue searching for them in the future. Number three, we have the end of the quest, the Kingfisher and the Robin. This happens roughly around level 14, but the thing is, there's a huge build-up to this quest. I mean, this is the climax to a series of deadly events that you've been dealing with ever since you got to Evia. So, So really quickly, it starts with you meeting a very sweet man, and his name is Agapios, and he's trying to help the city. See, there's a group of bandits known as the Dagger, and they're trying to take control of the city through greed and corruption and a lot of killing if need be. One day you speak to him, and he's, he's frantic. He can't calm himself down. This is because he found out the leader of the Dagger, the people they've, he's been fighting with for a long time, is called the Kingfisher. And this was the same nickname of Agapios' brother when they were just kids. He thought his brother died long ago in, in some kind of ship crash or some shipwreck, but what if he didn't? And this is more than just coincidence. What if it's his brother who's in charge of the very evil he's been trying to stop for so long? So, but you don't know. So you go on a series of quests to find out who exactly this Kingfisher is and where his base of operations is. Uh, you, you end up, you ask this one couple for details, but they get ambushed so that they won't give away any information. Uh, you search a shipwreck for any clues as to where their hideout is. You even infiltrate a castle to save one prisoner who might have some details. And luckily, he does, and he says the Kingfisher's real name is Nertos, which is, in fact the real name of Agapios's brother. His worst fears have been confirmed, and telling him this is not going to be fun. So you return to him to give him the bad news, and yeah, as expected, he does not handle it well. You already told him the dagger is operating on the island Skyros, so he runs off in a fit of rage, very likely going there. But the thing is, the Kingfisher still has to be stopped. Nothing about that has changed. So you and your allies start preparing for war. When you finally reach Skyros, the battle is already underway, and it follows you deep into the city, all the way up to the temple of Achilles, and it's here that two brothers, having been separated for years, are once again face to face. Agapios is pleading with you, please, please don't kill him, I can reason with him, he's the only family I have left. And this is where it gets really tough. Do you let him try to convince his brother to stand down, and possibly get away with his crimes? Or do you try and kill his brother right in front of his eyes? Agapios, he's been really good to you since you guys met, so you really, you may be tempted to let him talk to his brother. And if so, he'll pull him aside and say, Remember, brother, when we were kids, I was the robin and you were the kingfisher. And we would chase each other all day, fly as we pretended. Can't we go back to those innocent days? And for a second, a flash over Naratos' eyes. And he really thinks about it, and he says, Yes. 
You can fly, little Robin, and one push sends Agapios over the edge, plummeting to his death. His unconditional love was rewarded only with more pain. His brother had become too mad with power to be saved. And there you are, now striking at him, regardless, weighed down with that regret of, why did I let him try? Damn, why did I let him try? This, he deserved to see so much better than this. No, no, this can't be how it ends. The other option, which you're very likely to reload, is, uh, is telling him, look, your brother is beyond saving. In fact, the brother you know has been dead for a long time. Look around you at this burning city, all the lives already lost. He can't get away with just a slap on the wrist. And as much as it pains Agapios to hear this, your words really do seem to penetrate. And he looks up at you and he gives you a slight nod. It's time. You and your allies, they start cutting into their forces. The Kingfisher, he's really strong, but you have an advantage. You've seen the movie 300, and with one swift kick, now he's the one who's flying off the edge. The rest of his forces follow shortly after. And once the swords are sheathed and the bows relaxed, you stand at the temple watching over the land. Yep, while a time of mourning may come, at least now you and Agapios can rest easy knowing that you saved Evia from a dark and very twisted fate. Number two, we have a sweaty ball of oil from just sticking to things. Oh, wipe that away. You wipe it away, and you get a pivotal moment in the quest, a venomous encounter. You can find this during the main quest line when you visit Athens. Now, the city's current leader, Pericles, he needs your help. The people don't believe in him like they used to, and he wants you to help him restore his influence. Now, one thing that might help this is by finding one of his colleagues, a man named Matiacus. Apparently, he's been missing. So you go to his home, and that's when you hear screaming from the inside. And you're like, well, and the doors are all closed, so you, you quickly have to climb the walls and then drop in through the courtyard. And, and you follow the screaming and the voice, and as you enter, now you're surrounded by a group of poisonous snakes. They're all about to lash out. It takes quick reflexes to cut through them before they have the chance to do something fatal, but... You do kill them, and just in time, because when you speak to Matiacus, he'll tell you he was seconds away from being bitten and killed. See, apparently thugs broke into his home and bound him like this. They wanted to send a deadly message, but why? Well, you're gonna find out. Following the only clue you have, you're able to find the home of these attackers, and they're not even here, but their little pets are. More snakes coiled up, ready to lash out. Well, you kill them, and then you do some investigating, and it turns out these thugs are working for someone else. It's not their own doing. You also find another dead body behind the house. Oh, gee, this, it's a path of death for them. This is not good. So you're about to leave, and that's when these very people confront you. It's, not, it's usually the other way around, not this time. They say, what the hell are you doing, snooping around? You talk to them, and it turns out they're working for someone who wants to take down Pericles and all of his colleagues, including that man, Matiacus. They say he's weak, that he shouldn't be ruling Athens, and that him and his friends should die. The body behind the house, it was actually one of the attackers, but he died while handling these snakes. I mean, he must have been accidentally bitten. But see, now this is where it gets tough. Do you let them go, or do you kill them on the spot? Okay, gotta play devil's advocate here. Killing them might not be just. It, it sort of depends on whether you think you would be any different from them. Because if you do, I mean, you're both technically killing people for political reasons. Which means you did the same thing as them, and, and perhaps you feel that before giving them the chance at a fair trial, that, that just isn't your call to make. So, okay, so you can say... All right, beat it. And they'll genuinely be surprised. What, what mercy you have to show them. Now they're going to stop targeting political leaders and try to make a change in their community via more socially acceptable ways. What a beautiful Disney ending it is. But that's just what they're claiming. And you might be looking at them like, oh, you're so full of crap, your eyes are brown. So the other option is to kill them right there. And the reasoning for this is that they've already admitted to attempted murder which would have happened had you not intervened. Additionally, they've got one of their friends killed in the process. I mean, again, this is a path of death behind them. Their intentions are clearly bad, and, and if left unchecked, they're going to continue trying to murder people. All of this is pretty clear. So with a little stabby stabby, flabby stabby, crabby patty, the dudes are dead. All right, well, who's the SOB who's been supplying them with all these damn snakes? Follow the clues, as you usually do. Turns out it's some crazy dude living in a field with a bunch of snakes. 
what a freak. And it took me a disgusting amount, disgusting amount of tries before I could kill him. Like, it lit and the decision making is over, by the way, so I didn't even really need this footage. I don't really have to show this. It was like 30 extra minutes of recording just to show that I, I killed this guy, but, uh, well, I guess it completes the narrative. Now Pericles and his friends are safe from political assassination. We got our happy Disney ending after all. And number one, do you kill your own father or not? See, when you start the game, you periodically get flashbacks to when you're a kid. And in the first one, you get to see your father, Nikolaus, training you to fight. And he is the epitome of a father figure. I mean, he's strong, capable of protecting his family, but loving as well. And he looks you in the eyes and he says that you are his pride and joy. You're the best thing in his life. And you'll go on to make this family truly great. Well, you progress through the story and another flashback happens and this one is not as kind. A man is holding your younger brother over a cliff. Well, this is, this is if you're playing the female character. But he's about to drop him. Apparently an oracle said well, this is what has to be done in order for Sparta to have victory in the upcoming war. Just, and Nikolaus is okay with this. The, the word of the oracle is sacred, but who isn't cool with this? You. And you say, oh, screw what the visions are saying. I'm not letting my family die. So you rush in to intervene. The problem is, you're not fast enough. Young Alexios is still dropped, but you also knock off the man, and he falls to his death as well. And now everyone's freaking out. They're, they're calling you a murderer and telling your father that he should throw you off too. It's only fair. And as much as Nikolaus can't stand this idea, his greatest responsibility is to Sparta. His family actually comes second to that, and despite the endless cries from your mother, he's already made up his mind. Holding you by the forearm, he hangs you over the edge. And with one last look of goodbye, he lets go. Well, it turns out you survived the fall. And ever since then, you've made your own way in this world. Fighting other people's battles, getting paid for it, and repeat. You know, mercenary work has actually not been so bad. In fact... You're not just helping poor citizens on the street anymore. Soon you're helping Spartans. And you do such a good job that their leader wants to meet you. He's known as the Wolf of Sparta. And so you go up to this really nice meeting place. It's on top of a sunny cliff. And you approach him. And guess what? It's none other than Nikolaus. Your father. After all these years, and a million words run through your brain, all the things you wish you could have said to him as he held you over that edge, just dangling helplessly. And you say, it's me, Cassandra, and now the tables have turned. Look, what am I to do with you? And he tries to get you to see reason, that you forced his hand, that he had no other choice. But Nikolaus, at what cost does the Spartan army have your loyalty? What good does winning a war have if you've lost the only people in the world that you truly love? So now it's you grabbing him, holding him over the edge, and you're furious, and you're shaking, and it's up to you to decide. Let him fall? If you don't, then you probably feel that his actions were justified. You did, after all, kill someone. Is he supposed to let that go? Plus the man holding your younger brother, he wasn't just some random attacker, some, some crazy dude. He had your father's consent to do the dropping in the first place. He wasn't entirely an enemy. All right, so under this, under those circumstances, if you spare Nikolaus, you throw him back to land. You try to show that you're the better person, and he, he really, he's moved by this. He gives you advice to seek out your mother, and also to stay safe, and then he leaves. He says he needs to regain his honor, because after this, he isn't so sure that he has any left. And then just like that, he's gone. And I, I'm probably not far enough in the game, I think I'm, right now I'm only level 17, but... I'm just assuming that if you do let him live, that you'll probably see him eventually. And I, I don't know what'll happen then, but it should be fun. I'm interested to uh, see what happens. Now, the other option is to kill him. He tried to do it to you, and you might feel like it's only fair. And plus, who knows, maybe you want to side with the Athenians and not the Spartans, and you feel like taking down a very important figure in the Spartan army is going to be very beneficial. After all, you'd be acting out for the good of your army, and no one knows that better than Nikolaus himself. So, if you decide this, you're actually surprised when Cassandra still pulls him away from the edge. It's like, oh, I knew it was too good to be true this early in the game, but he should have kept his mouth shut. I loved you. 
and your blood. Turns out, this guy isn't even your real father. Plot twist! But at least for now, you did what you thought was right, and that's the best you can ever do. And there you have it, five hard decisions in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And down below, please tell me, what would you have done in one of these situations? <laughs> Alright, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I, well, if it means anything to you, I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I killed everyone. But I'm playing a certain type of character, so don't mind me.